Hello and welcome back to Let's Make Murley, a character for the video game Grey Skies Dark Waters. I am currently modeling her in ZBrush and um, was running into some difficulties sculpting her uh, hat because um, of several crashes, um, difficulties, so I was getting a little salty, had to go and yoga self myself into a sphere of ohm. Um, I'm gonna give this uh, another shot now. I've got kind of a clear head, um, thoughts cleared out. Um, and I also, um, something that was really getting out of hand was that white touch ring, the Windows white touch ring, which kept on popping back up. Um, I'm, I've tried some new things, including um, did some research online, and I tried um, taking this Windows Freihand verwenden, uh, what, or whatever it is in your language, um, region specific. Um, I, I took this away, and apparently this will take away that white dot and a lot of the brush lag that comes with it. Um, in addition to that, I also did a bit of a more aggressive, never ever switch to touch PC Windows, please mode. So we'll see if that um, fixes it. I, I just wanted to get rid of that white border up there. That's why I minimized and maximized. So uh, this is a quick save. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> we lost all of the work we did on that little tag. But um, fortunately, that wasn't too much work. Um, I'm going to go and do another um, save right now, just to make sure, double, triple sure, that we're not um, working into nothingness, and um, hopefully, 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 we're going to get some better, more progress done now. Okay, so let's see what we have here. This definitely seems to be the reprojected version. Let's, um, I'm just gonna go here and uh, mask that. And, oh yes, much, 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 much less lag. I'm already feeling it. Wow. If you have a Wacom tablet, please uncheck this. I don't, just, Windows and tablet, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't do it. Um, so, gonna just uh, be going back and forth now, um, trying to, Fix up this rim. Got some a little bit more relaxing music too to cover any alms crashes. Kind of become one with the void that binds. If anybody here has ever read or listened to Hyperion, you will get that reference. Um, Hyperion is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book series. Um, in it, uh, the. Basically, the, the meaning of existence and all human um, interaction and experience is this void which binds, which is uh, where all human love, emotion, and feeling, and memory gets comes from and gets stored from, and evil corporations and religions. Um, basically, the not the corporations, but the creatures of this world, the AIs, they use this void for feeding themselves. So it's, it's a very, very beautiful thing. I just noticed that um, this hat is asymmetrical in the front, so I'm gonna have to be working outside of symmetry, which is fine. Um, I'll just have to uh, do things more a bit. Um, it's just gonna take a tiny bit longer, but I think that's gonna be all right. Um, right now I'm just sculpting out this um, definition of this pattern here. Just uh, make it look a little less lobby, give it more structure, and make it looking more like a knit um, fabric um, as opposed to a blob thing. Um, so just g going back and forth, trying to add a little bit of structure, kind of um, take away maybe some of that visual noise, but not too much. I'm not quite sure. Kind of trying to play around, see what I can do. Mm, polish Chris Bedges. No, no, that's just kind of blurring everything. I do. I don't want to lose detail, but I also wanted to read better. Um, so that was kind of the. Oh wow, the lag! It's so much less lag. This is amazing. I just have to continually emphasize how awesome it is now to have finally fixed this tormenting tormentor. Oh yes, I am. I am being. Oh. Very happy. Why had? Why did I not do this earlier? It's one of those things where you always think it couldn't make that much of a difference, but oh yes, it can. It makes so much difference to 
just turn off those Windows tablet PC settings. So, don't... It may often seem like a kind of like a waste of time to get things working right and you just I, I just wanted to start sculpting on this computer when I installed Windows 10 so I never went as hardcore I'm gonna make sure that my tablet is working correctly mode and I didn't really notice how how much it was affecting me now I'm starting I'm kind of noticing how much I can't believe I sculpted all that oh my god so I decided to put some of my own music on as well. Um, I usually try to avoid music with singing, but since this is uh, black metal, um, it's debatable whether it's singing or just pure vocal uh, musicianship. Um, it does come out of mouths, basically, and vocal cords, but it's a lot more, a lot less concrete, and hopefully it won't interfere so much with my, with the frequency of my voice. Um, we'll see how it goes. I've also um, readjusted my microphone for these past um, two sessions already. Uh, one of my friends was like, hey, uh, everything sounds great and all, but um, your mic could definitely use some more gain. I had to turn it up way um, in order to get to, to be able to hear you on YouTube. So I switched my mic settings and my gain settings around, played around with that. Hopefully I've got some better audio levels going on now. trying to work out that structure. I think um, something I won't be able to get around doing is to make a mask of this upper um, part of Merle's cap and then to detail and kind of bumpathize this structure on top of it. Oh wow, these, these tablet drivers are making me feel like a new person. I, I, am, I feel like a great weight has been lifted off of my chest. Like a great frustration. I think yoga helped too, obviously. That is one of those things that will definitely clear up your mind. Kind of help you focus on, on things that are important. Okay. Um, so next step, what I kind of want to do is to start masking all this. And then see, go, go to the top subdivision level. And I'll see if I can actually create a polygroup for it. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't work that well. Um, it could lead to instability, but we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. So what I'm, what I can also do is um, definitely um, turn it into a color and just fill it with, say, black, and then later on uh, just mask by color and, and use the poly paint to kind of save my mask because I really want to have this as a mask. I think that's going to be really important in continuing to work out the details on this hat. Because as you can see, this is a very time consuming thing here to make this mask, which I wish I'd saved it right when I came out of the surface uh, mode. Basically when I was um, using the surface noise to generate this um, texture over the UV which um, I can't use now anymore. Um, there is this option to uh, to mask by surface noise. And that's how I, I, I masked it and then I inflated these unmasked portions, which I am now masking again. And if I'd somehow saved that mask, I know there's also um, a method to save it as an alpha. If I'd just done that, I could have saved myself a whole lot of time right now. But that's fine. I need a little bit of um, ohm sculpting to clear my mind. So let's just kind of sink into the bliss of repetitive, simple movements. I'm gonna make my brush size a bit larger. Make sure, yep, I definitely have pressure sensitivity. So excited! Um, this band, I think, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's called Mesarthum. Mesarthum. They categorize themselves as uh, atmospheric, cosmic, atmospheric black metal. 
and uh, I actually just obtained a shirt from them a couple days ago. I have been wearing it non-stop, it's getting kind of gross. But I'm so excited every time looking in the mirror and just seeing their huge... Um, their al the album cover art for this album is the Horsehead Nebula. Um, and basically the t-shirt is that album art of a Horsehead Nebula with um, some geometric um, kind of... Uh, how do you call them? Um, sacred geometry on top of that. And it just, every time I look at it, I just feel this sense of peace and awe in the face of the cosmos. It's very kind of therapeutic. And in case you haven't noticed yet, I, I've got a very, um, I'm not exactly a low-key personality, put it that way. So I, I definitely, I, I am absolutely addicted to, to the yoga and, uh, and just physical Ex physical fitness club just to kind of take away all of the excess energy I get stored up in me every day a lot of other people they don't need that I am amazed I, I wish that I could just be chill get fat and just stay relaxed but I've got so much energy that if I don't like let it out every once in a while it'll just kind of make me go crazy And this, and this kind of music definitely is part of something that helps me in that. Yeah. So that's cool. It is incredible how much better this, um, just drawing these masks, it's so much more natural. I feel like I'm drawing on paper while sculpting on, on, a, on a paper. There we go. Here we go. Now I'm gonna emerge this and kind of start playing around with it, see if this is what I need. I'm gonna go with a standard brush, kind of go back and forth. It's not quite how I was imagining it. Well, let's just polish the fuck out of this. I'm not sure how it got so asymmetric. Though. What was I doing? Sometimes you just you get in such a funk. That you lose the sight of, of, of the bigger picture. I'm gonna use my Damien standard brush here. Um, see if we can actually. I think there's a way to under masking. There's a way. Mask by Alpha? No. Let's see, I think maybe if I go here, Alpha, make texture, export process Alpha. Well, in that case, I'm just gonna. Um, Take a blue color, like this, and fill. Actually, that's, yeah, that'll be fine. It looks really red, that, that's a really obtrusive color. I'm gonna take a little bit more of a low-key color. That should be fine. Fill object, and then Switch back to white. Fill object with that. 
Nah, I don't like any of that. So what am I gonna do here? Um, the other thing we wanted to try was to try grouping this. So I'm just gonna make this visible, make everything else invisible, kind of. Oops. Kind of mask everything else. So I have only this and say group masked. So that got me a pretty nice poly group of all of this masked. And yeah, that should. See how it looks like in the lower subdivision levels? It kind of holds up. It's really only going to be useful when... Ah. Ah. You saw what happened there? As I go into the lower subdivision levels, the group actually kind of dissipates. So that's really unfortunate. What I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to do something a bit crazy and just... Um, go back to my mask before I grouped it. Like this. Take this out and put that a bit more here. I think what I'll try um, doing some work it a bit more, and now I'm gonna invert this. Uninflate this, polish this the fuck out. It's a very concentrated thing. It's polishing. I think this could be cool. I'm gonna switch down and polish it in a lower subdivision level. Wow. I didn't even notice how um, much this was intersecting here. Uh, move topological, move this in. So I'm going to kind of see these as the... Um, going a little off-road here, in other words, into making these more like um, cushions along the cap. So they're nice and fluffy, which is kind of deviating from this map design here, but I think it'll um, add a lot. I'm gonna blur my mask just a tiny bit and polish some more because I like that a lot more and then now if I go into the high detail I still have those pads. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is actually I think I'm gonna do something crazy. I'm gonna group masked and now um, I'm gonna split unmasked points can I do that? oh I can't do that I'm gonna make a duplicate of this mesh and in this duplicate mesh I'm going to basically a duplicate of the subcode tool I'm gonna go hide and all them subdisk say group masked I don't like that. I don't like this. So I'm gonna go back. Undo, undo. Until I have my nice mask and it's nice and sharp. So here I'm gonna duplicate the model and now um, go forward again so that I have the nice shape which I wanted. Yeah. This one. Let's go up and sub this. So I have that. Looks really nice. And for this part, where I have this nice mask, I'm going to say at the highest subdivision level and say group masked. Unmask that. Uh, invert the mask and now say group masked. And now I'm going to um, polish this group. Polish this. So I should um, actually use the poly groups. I think that's under poly groups. Well, maybe it's um, actually. Polished by groups, here we go. Let's add some of that. So I should make these edges really nice and round. And now the, the, the magic part. Um, split unmasked. I'm gonna delete hidden. Seems like my mask isn't quite perfect.
group mask to see how that works now. Oh, and I'm actually going to pause the group right here. I forgot I had this slider. It's really nice. So it's, it's just checking to make sure it's consistently going through everywhere. It's not missing anything. Ah. That. Let's try it again. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, cool. Now, um, I'm going to do the curve tube. And I think I'm going to try and curve tube all this to kind of get a an outline effect going of a really small thing. So to do that, I'm going to actually frame the border here and then add the curve tube to everything. Oh, uh, I'm going to A, delete hidden, delete lower, delete hidden, make it a really small brush size. See how I can frame mesh. I wish it would um, add my circle to all of these. See what that looks like at first. Take my curve step up to like six, because this is really tiny small. Yeah, uh, I'm actually going to take it down just a little bit, make it more like five. This is just adding kind of a structural detail. So, I'll do that three. Yeah. What I'd like to do is actually outline all of these. I wonder if there's a function like that for the under the stroke menu because I I framed my mesh here. Curve functions. Hmm. Well. Something else I could try instead would be to hmm, really kind of disappoint that it didn't work. Well, I guess just kind of thinking creatively, what we could do, um, which would be kind of cool, is mask by feature. Um, first, I kind of want to zero mesh this. we could just, um, now that we have it anyway, kind of just panel loops this. See what happens if we polish this one? Now we have that same structure. Let's see, I don't want to do panel loops to elevation 100. a little bit less, a little bit less thick. Polishes. There's a lot of random shapes in here now. I'm kind of hoping that they um, are going to read like, uh, oh, Sometimes uh, when I, you accidentally press T, yeah, I'm sure you are all aware. Oh, those are her ears. I see. Well, we're going to have to move these in a bit. Because, I mean, it's completely natural that you're, 
you're going to be pressed in by your ears. Just kind of dragging this to the edge to make it look like it's actually getting sewn in there. And I don't know if I like this yet. I'm just kind of experimenting around trying to find a structure which speaks the way that I want it to. Since really that's gonna be the important part. Really bummed out that those that the curve would have to actually get done every on everything. That's unfortunate. But I guess that's part of just experimenting around is figuring out things like that. So I might just hide this part of the mesh. Inflate this a bit. I'm not even quite sure what this is supposed to be and when kind of just farting, arting around like this often you just generate things which don't make any sense but kind of are, are looking for a happy accident to make your, make your model actually <laughs> look good. So it's kind of like a Spider-Man, it's odd. I'm gonna turn up my Z intensity. Trying to work this out. But I, I think I don't think I'm going to use this. I'm gonna hide that for now. Cause it looks fine like this and it just looks like some sort of a plastic um, cap instead of an actual cap cap. Keep working, keep on working on that hair. And I think, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna go with this being one of those kind of beanies with like a plastic rim, like a plastic outside. Because some of that texture, it's ended up reading very well in that direction. And, well, yeah, it, I don't mind it. It's definitely got very crinkly and it actually looks like a material even though it's absolutely not that material there. So I think I'm just gonna kind of sculpt some details into this and go with that. Just gotta roll with it, maybe not. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like when you get happy accidents like this shape here, I just gotta roll with it. And I want to stay flexible in the design space so this is actually, you know, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's a very interesting shape and it's looking cool. Looks like I wanted it to look like this. I don't like the shape up here so much, but well, hell. I think the amount of time to actually fix that would be disproportionate to how much better it looks and I don't know if anybody else would ever notice that. Um, but what I think somebody else would definitely notice is this right here. Oh no! So this is just going to become a mega fold. I'm going to actually isolate this and smooth the inside out. Because I imagine the inside being like a soft plastic thing with then like a padded outside. Yeah, I think I can be happy with this. I think we can move on. David, it is time to move on. It is time to move on. 
So, what I want to work on now, I think, since we still have a bunch of time, really. Kind of after salvaging that jack, I'm going to do a quick save. I'm going to start working on the jack. I'm going to get some subdivision in here. Oh! Wait a second, before we go on to the jacket, the thing that actually crashed Seabrush last time was this little tag. And I think this little tag, making something like that, would actually still look pretty interesting. So, yeah. I think I'm going to go for it. It's going to be sewn on across these two parts right here. I'm actually going to mo model it on this base thing, just because that way I'll have a nice flat mesh. And remember last time, um, one thing that I did learn from Modeling that, oh it says mom, oh that's cute, oh that's perfect, that is so perfect. Um, one thing I did learn was that uh, just using the masking method and then extracting the subtool from that led to pretty disastrous topology which got me so frustrated that it crashed the program. Um, so what I'm really kind of doing right now is making sure that this, this has, has just really perfect clean topology. Alright, and it doesn't take very long, I'm just going to click. Um, to ding and split unmasked points, gonna make them visible. Here we go. And turn on dynamic. And what I'm gonna do here now that I have this is go to my Z modeler brush, um, use the crease function to crease this edge. Um, and I can see most of the edges are already properly creased, a la the beautiful topology brush auto crease. And all we have to do is do this dynamic. It's nice and smooth, fits on there, and then when we're texturing it later on, we can put a nice little mom emblem on that. Now, what I'm kind of debating what would be a really cool detail and just kind of gets me really happy would be to um, maybe get some stitches stitching this along the side. I'm going to use my standard brush, kind of get this flowing outward. Uh, making sure that accurate curve is on because I'm working on a corner. There we go. So this is just forcefully kind of machine stitched onto here. That's what I'm kind of feeling. Like that. So I'm kind of trying to give it the shape of this already well-worn hoodie. Oh. It's just so messy down there, but I like I like the noise. I just kind of wish that you know what I could do? So I could put fiber mesh along this. This is a crazy idea, but it just might look pretty good. Nah, I think fiber mesh would A, be extremely hard to bake, and B, um, not really fit in with this plastic artificial jacket we've ended up making now. There we go, yes. And plastic artificial, I think, like, I'm just kind of feeling it working really well with her character anyway, because um, she's trying to make this artificial front for herself, so... I don't know, I feel like it kind of... It's working out. Oh, I've got a bit of the uh, under jacket there. Oops. Um, I'm actually... I'm, right now I'm loading my stitches brush. Oh yeah, the buttons brush, which we couldn't find. Alright, stitches are... Da -da -da, where are they? Here we go. Switch to a single stitch. Let's see what happens. Make it real small. Basically what I want is to really get it right onto this edge, so I'm gonna go and um, switch switch off dynamic. It does not want to snap. Mask by feature. I'm just gonna mask by creases. No, not mask. Um, creased edges, frame mesh. Yeah, it's a nice detail. I like that, I'm gonna keep that. 
Mm, turn on dynamic. There we go. It's a really nice feature. This um, I really love this crease brush. I got that from the ZBrush forum somewhere. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... Um, what I could actually use this for is to see how far back I can go. Thing is, if I frame this, it's going to have this exact same um, problem as before in that... Yeah, that's not going to help us. Um, duplicate this again. Um, go down to my subdivision levels. Um, okay. Unhide, go down, delete, do this. Mm -hmm. Let's go to polygroups. There we go. Just add some little stitches in there. Make them bigger so that you can actually see them in the final model. Split on mass points and delete the subtool. I'm going to switch back to the actual hat, unhide it all. Yeah, and I'm happy with um, that detail. I'm going to just um, spend some time cleaning this up because I'm not sure if I am going to come back to the hat since this is the detailing part. I'm going to kind of try and get these stitches um, showing a bit better. And I'm, I think, just kind of finding myself this edge here. It's gotten to have a really organic kind of look, which I'm kind of, I'm happy with it. Um, kind of giving it that feel of crinkled plastic or, I don't know, something that you stick around the head. I think those stitches are a little too thin for me, so I'm going to go in and under deformation, um, turn on the inflate a bit. Yeah, I am happy with this. I'm going to um, go in here. Split the um, split the wheat from the rye. I'm gonna um, do some auto groups. Here. Oh. Turn off dynamic. Ah, I have two layers. That's fine. Group this. Split unmasked points. Go one down and actually start subdividing this because um, just for reference I'd like to just sketch something in here with a standard brush, turn on RGB, put it black. Um, I'm gonna first switch color to white, fill object, switch color to black, subdivide again. I have one more subdivision model. Gonna turn off dynamics uh, brush size by shift clicking this. Just take this down. Which color? It's a little too dark. I know I'm taking, I'm, I'm going way and in, getting way into this right now, but I just want it to look nice. Just to have a bit of visual. I like that. And I'll go and take this back to white. There we go. That's reading nicely. So the cap ended up having a lot of visual noise. And we got way more into detailing it than at first anticipated, but I think it, it, it paid off. Um, it was a tough one. It was a very tough one. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we can successfully call that done. I think we can 
That is that is export ready. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm gonna um, just go in here and actually add a couple more subdivision levels. And the next thing is gonna be to create this um, zipper right here. And the way I think I'm gonna do this is I'm actually I think I'm gonna have to draw it by hand. Um, I'm gonna create a duplicate of this mesh, switch down. So maybe second subdivision level, uh, delete higher, lower, everything. And then I think what we have is a zipper brush that might actually be under insert multi mesh. We've got a, I know one of these is a zipper, ah here we go, zipper P or zipper metal. Oh we want the plastic, we want a plastic zipper. So I'm gonna go in here and this is Pretty much one of the greatest brushes that ever got included in a po program. I, I love this brush. It is it is such an awesome insert zipper brush. So what's happening here, which is a kind of a bummer, is that um, it 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 was just um, basically going in between the mesh. So I'm gonna try and do this by hand. I'm going to have to hide the uh, rope. Oh, that wasn't it. Saving. There we go. These. And the bobbles. No, I did not want to switch to... Oops. Well, that's not what I wanted to do at all. So, go back. And here, turn this off, turn this off, turn this off. Turn this off. Turn this off. Where is this? What is? This? Oh, that's the blocking. Oh goodness! So many things are now visible, which should never have been visible. So where's our copy of the jacket? Here we go. I'm gonna take this zipper brush. There we go. Take this draw size up. Oh no, not that draw size. Make it about this big. So it's a little too small. That looks like a good size. I'm actually gonna. Yeah, it's not dynamic. Good. Just kind of get it into the basic shape. And then the zipper actually goes a little bit further. Up to here. Was that too long? I don't think so. Ah, that was a little bit too long. I'm going to take it a tiny bit further. Oops. Sure, let's go with that. Drag this down. Alright, well, I think I'll just have to um, adjust that manually later. this thing. Um, I can't see any way this could help us. I'm gonna regret that later. Wait, what? Oh, goodness. Was that the actual jacket? I think I just deleted the jacket. Well, I'm glad we have an autosave. Um, and that's a, that's a good um, place to end for today anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, Give it a like if you enjoyed watching me sculpt. Uh, give it a dislike if you can't stand all my saving, crashing, and disorganized conduct. Um, 
and I'll see you next time.